Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, just hilarious. Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Jess is still on maternity leave, so Lauren LaRosa's filling in. And we got a special guest in the building. Her the, album, the Sunny legend, Days, the legendary. is out right now. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Yolanda Adams. Welcome. Thank you all for having me. How, How are you good? feeling this morning? Absolutely fantastic. Okay, Great. okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is your 14th album? Yeah, this is my 14th Sunny studio Days. album. 14th yeah. studio album. What goes through your head when you hear that? Wow. Uh, Gratefulness, appreciation that I'm still doing what I do and loving the fact that folks still want to hear what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and that it still inspires them and gets them going Mm -hmm. and keeps them lifted up, you know. So, yeah, that's how I feel. Do you remember putting out your first album and and how that felt and the fact, I don't know if the industry was ready for gospel music the way it was? Well, the industry wasn't ready for me Mm because... Because I was, you know, I wasn't like your typical gospel Gosh, artist. Man. I didn't look like everybody else, and you know, folks kind of give me flack about that because I, I didn't grow up in a place where we couldn't wear makeup or we couldn't wear pants. You know, in my house, it was cool to go to the skating rink with Jesus. So mm-hmm. <laughs> we went everywhere with God, mm-hmm. and so there were some people who were like, "Well, you shouldn't wear that lipstick, and you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't do that." And I was like, "Hmm." Okay, nah, I'm I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never understood why uh, uh, religious people, Christians, are so judgmental when the Bible says, "Thou shalt not judge." Well, I think it's human nature mm-hmm. when people don't understand, you know, other folks, whatever. I again, it's all in the way you were raised, because my parents were real cool, so I wasn't <laughs> raised with limitations. As a matter of fact, my mom and dad told us that everything is possible for us. Mm -hmm. And so when I went into the um, actual solo part of gospel music, I was, it it was, it took me aback for a little while because I'm like, oh, oh, so y'all can't do, oh. So in order to be a gospel artist, you can't do this, 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 and that, and the other. And I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna be that kind of gospel artist. No, go ahead, finish. No, no, no. You're... I was going to say, but wasn't, your mom was a ministry of music in the church. So yes. her church, because I know when I go to church with my grandmother, you, you can't wear pants. You can't do certain things to this day. And I have to just go with that. Your mom's church didn't have those rooms, even though Not she didn't Not at all. Have... We were Baptists. Okay. So. <laughs> gotcha. You know, the deacons would smoke outside. so we uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke what? <laughs> hey, watch out. Okay. Cigarettes. <laughs> watch out. <laughs> it was a burning was, bush. It was still calling it dope back then. Damn. So, no. That, that, <laughs> No, so that's why. No, it was it was cigarettes. <laughs> Those. Y- your faith is a core part of your music. Though. Absolutely. Uh, how has your faith journey shaped not just your music, but just your life in general? Oh, my gosh, it's everything. Mm-hmm. It's the basis of everything. It's the basis of my businesses. It's the basis of my parenthood. It's the basis of all I do. You know, I wake up joyful every morning because, again, I'm here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we know a lot of people within the last couple of weeks that are Lord, near and dear to us yeah. that are just gone, that. you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, to be able to wake up, do what you love to do every single day, I know y'all know about that, mm-hmm. is a blessing. Amen. And so faith has everything to do with everything I do. When you was doing morning radio, did you used to wake up? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, so it was live. It was live, live, live. Oh, okay, 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 yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Did you so like? Was, did you uh, like it getting up that early? Absolutely. You know. It, there's something that happens when the mic comes on and the light comes on. You realize, okay, you have a few seconds to inspire somebody's day. You have a few seconds to describe this song or right. describe mm-hmm. this issue, you know. And so we were like, y'all, we, we had a full show. We talked about sports. We talked about relationships and all of that good stuff. So, yeah, it was 3.30 in the morning, mm-hmm. wake up, you know, got to be at the station at 4.15. How much did you play your own music? Very little. Mm. I wasn't like, you know. The programmer side? Not not even that. It was like, I want to hear somebody else. Got mm-hmm. you. Because I hear me all the time. I've mm-hmm. been with me the longest. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm, and I love hearing new artists. I love breaking in new artists. I love uh, hearing different types of mm-hmm. gospel music. And so we did a lot of that too. Do I'll you do miss f- the ready? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, do you miss it? You I do up. miss it at times. But as you all know, when one door is finished or when one season is finished, 
the other season began. And if I was still doing radio, I couldn't do television and movies and soundtracks and mm -hmm. things like that. So. I was going to ask, you know, well, growing up in the church, how much pressure was that? You know, because being a kid growing up in the, in the church, everything seemed perfect, right? They wanted everything to be perfect. And if it wasn't perfect, it seems like they shamed you back then. Mm. Well, here's the thing. I, and I'm going to go back to my upbringing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what churches y'all went to, mm -hmm. but <laughs> we knew at our church we weren't perfect. So it was not this thing that you have to have it this way. You got to get it right all the time because you're not going to get it right, right all right. the time. You know, as grown mm -hmm. as I am now, I don't get it right all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one of the um, misconceptions about faith and religion. Mm -hmm. It's not that we are perfect people. It's not that we're even trying to be perfect people, but what we are trying to do is be loving people. Yes. We're trying to be caring people. Mm -hmm. We're trying to show people a different way of existing because, I mean, and, and we, we all know we, we live in this space now where everything is cancel culture. Mm -hmm. I hate this because you hate this or I hate this person because you hate this person. It's like. Uh, can we all just get back to the basis of everything? Mm -hmm. Because the basis for me is for God so loved. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm supposed to love as well. And what kept you grounded? Because even going to college, usually the yeah. church girls were the wildest. They were the ones that <laughs> they're no longer on the leash. <laughs> Bomb and dad is no, no longer Adam. around. And that they laugh were sound like you know a thing too. That, that came from deep within. <laughs> well, 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 I'm telling what, my business, boy. <laughs> but again, here we go. I didn't. I wasn't restricted in anything in my life. So I went to the dances, mm -hmm. you know, I hung out at the house parties and stuff like that when I was younger. So I didn't have that mm -hmm. restriction. And so when I got to college, I didn't have to wild out because it's like, oh, y'all doing that? Oh, child, please, you know. So I don't know. I don't know why that happens. I think it's in a person mm -hmm. to try to test the waters. Mm -hmm. And then when they find out, oh, it ain't that wonderful, mm -hmm. then they go back into their little shell and it's, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know. <laughs> How you feel about the church nowadays? Then? Because it, you can't, if you test the waters at certain churches and certain congregations, like they almost like condemn people for certain things. Well, uh, and here, and you, you did say certain churches, which is, I'm glad you said that, because certain churches have this. And certain religions have a an idea that you're supposed to be so high up here that, and I, I've never gotten that whole concept of the super religious kind of thing because I didn't have to be that. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was be myself, and yeah. God loved me for being myself, yeah. not a pretend Yolanda, because I, I've never been good at pretending, so, you know, except when I'm acting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> but I think nowadays the the view of that comes from people who are outside mm -hmm. looking in, not people inside certain churches, mm. you know, because you have to be inside to experience that. And I know that there are some people who can make you feel like yeah. you're not, you know, at your best. You're not as good as them and stuff like I get that now. I'm like big old 63 year old. I get that now. You know, people text me, why you wear that? Why you doing this? And why are you showing up here? And why are you showing Because <laughs> I'm grown. How does no. that make you feel though? Because it's I been going on for so long with yeah, you. But, but again, I mean, I will never see those people. I will never experience them. They will never come to my house. Mm -hmm. They will never come to the barbecue. So, you can't get so emotionally attached to negativity that you stop being you Ooh. and you stop living and you stop living your life the way you live your life, you know? So it's like, they gonna be fine, cause I'm fine. Why do, why do people give you so much smoke for your outfits? Like, I, I'm like, what is Miss Adams wearing that looks so crazy? Now, I don't, well, I don't get, I'm like, I've never seen you, you ain't like- The oh, late, great Daryl Coley said something from the stage one time, mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, y'all mad because y'all can't wear it. <laughs> mm, that's real. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I, and I think because. But they talk like you sexy red. And salute to sexy red. But well, you're not, you're... well, you know, uh, 
she listens to the music, so mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I have nothing against her. Mm-hmm. But it's like when people, some people are uncomfortable with you being comfortable in your skin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm extremely comfortable in my skin. And I have been for a long, long time, which is why I said, don't don't fall for the negativity. Don't, you know, mm-hmm. there because there will be so many people who applaud you yep. and are in your corner and want you to make it and want you to succeed that the two, three, or 40 opposed to two million, it's like I'm going to hang out with the two million. That's right. Rather than the 40. You know, you said something that's not as very important. You said you've always been comfortable in your own skin. When did you get to that point? Because, you know, just the way you present aesthetically, you're tall, you're beautiful. When you walk in the room, everybody's like, oh, who that? So I know that <laughs> makes people uncomfortable. So when did you get comfortable being, be, making people uncomfortable? I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think because I've always been a tall kid. Mm-hmm. And my parents always talked about how amazing stature and grace and elegance is. I think I really got a hold to it probably in my 20s. Mm. You know, after I graduated college and I had some stuff under my belt and Mm. it's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to take on the world. Mm. And when you're taking on the world, you can't have that insecurity of, well, how will it feel and how will they accept me and how will they do this? How will they do that? It's like, nah, you, you got to get out there. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. So it was, yeah, in my 20s. Absolutely. Do, do the pressures of the music industry exist in gospel music? Like when you hear these stories of all these debaucherous things that happen in the music industry, do that, does that exist in the gospel world? The debauchery part of gospel music is not something that I know of okay. because... I didn't participate in anything, if there was anything going Mm -hmm. on. But the pressure to outdo your last project is always there. Mm. You know, and and you know how it is. Come on, you guys are in media, so you know that it's every quarter. Okay, your numbers were so-and-so. Now you got to beat this, or you got to beat that person in Houston, or you got to beat this person in San Antonio. I think it's always that. And you have to surround yourself with management and people who are on your side that help you buffer that. Mm -hmm. Because um, somebody's urgency can be placed on you so it's that so it's your urgency. But if your if their urgency is is not your emergency, why are we doing this? Mm. You know? Because Everybody wants something different from you. Mm -hmm. You know, people pull at you for different reasons. And some of them are not authentic. And some of those reasons are very nefarious. You know, well, I just want to get, you know, uh, 20 million done. This, you know, y'all, you, mm-hmm. we're business people in the room. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, even if it, you know, let's talk about branding. If it goes against your brand, but it's a whole lot of money, you know, you have to be strong enough to say, nah, I can't do that, mm-hmm. you know. And then you have to tell them, no, we're not doing that. Were you talking about that or were you talking about like people trying to take advantage of her coming up in the industry, stealing publishing and royalties that we hear from Let's so many different artists? all of the debauchery. Like, you oh, know, yeah, no, oh, yeah. what, what were you oh, talking about? You talking yeah, about all that? All that. Biggest this, scandalous? The drugs, the sex, all yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Well, first of all, I don't do drugs, so I, I, don't, I don't get invited to mm-hmm. the drug parties if mm-hmm. there are drug parties. And I've never been a, um, an exhibitionist. So I don't get invited to the freak offs and stuff like that. <laughs> if, if there are some, you know, they crossed over in the gospel. That is crazy. No, 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 no. And so I will, you know, I will say from my purview, I don't know about any of that. Now, as far as publishing and royalties and all of that, oh, you always have somebody posing as a manager or a business manager trying Mm -hmm. to, you know, because they see, Mm -hmm. okay, you're effective, you get the numbers, you know, you, you you know, you could be out every single day doing something. So that's a cash cow right there. Right. You steal from a gospel artist. You've got to be going to hell. I was thinking the same thing. A lot of them going. (laughs) But people (laughs) still in a church too. A lot of them them going, you know, so. (laughs) The the new new album is called Sunny Days. Yes. 
What is Yolanda Adams' definition of a sunny day? Oh, my gosh. Uh, my definition of a sunny day is a day where I feel so good about myself, about what I'm doing, about my purpose, mm. and also <clears throat> about the climate of the world. You know, you have to be optimistic to really look at where we are right now and say, but there's something good that's going to come out of this. Yes. And so that's what I wanted to do with this project because it took us four years to actually finish the project. We started it in 2018, and then all of a sudden uh, – Jim Jam and Terry Lewis got busy. Donna Lawrence got busy. All of the producers got busy. I got busy. And then there was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so that stopped a lot of things. And then Kingdom Business, we started filming that. You know, we had seasons one and two. We had to film. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, all right, all right. We got to get this album done. So it finally got done this year. And I'm just so really excited about that. So. Mm -hmm. It was your schedule the reason why it took, like, it was like a 13-year break in between um, becoming in 2011 and then now? Uh, it was a 13-year break between the solo project. Yes. Yeah. But, so why, though? Like, why that? Because there was so much other stuff going on in oh, between, or is it child, just a priority? I was so busy. <laughs> I was so busy. I was uh, going overseas, doing a lot of things. And then I also did uh, several soundtracks to movies and television shows. We did the soundtrack and the music for SpongeBob on uh, Broadway. Mm. We did a song there, me and my music director, uh, Rodney East. And so things just got busy like that. Got you. And, you know, with my projects, I have to, like, tailor time for them. Because mm -hmm. if I don't, it's going to be, like, it's going to be real crazy, you know. With with non-gospel artists, they go into the studio, maybe it's a heartbreak or, like, you know, they do indulge in smoking, drinking, whatever to get them. Or For gospel artists, is it that you're, like, you're praying, you deep in the spirit? Like, where does that come from for you guys? Oh, it comes from the same experiences. Mm. Of course, we're not, you know, getting high trying to figure out what God's doing, but... <laughs> We oh, is from the earth. Found, nobody found that funny but me. We okay. is from the, we is from the earth. Though. It is from yeah. the earth. Oh, I get what but, you did there. We're not yes. getting drunk trying to figure out what God is doing because yeah, they be yeah, trying to yeah, figure out what their man got going on. Okay, <laughs> heard you. Okay, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you so much. No, uh, it comes from the experiences that we're having in our lives because you figure we got eight plus billion people in the world, so at least a million got to be going through what you're going through. And so if you're making a business decision, if you're making a relationship decision, if you're making a, um, a, a moving, you know, geographical moving decision, all decisions for us, you know, we have to ask God, OK, is this real? Is this me or is this you? Or do I just want this for me? And, you know, a lot of times God says, OK, if you want it for you, let's do it. Mm -hmm. You know, God is not. That is interesting. I've been writing down notes. Oh, I yeah. know about that. Yeah, because because God is not trying to keep you stuck. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, He wants the best for you always. Mm -hmm. And I think people have fashioned God in so many ways that it's confusing to people when they see someone, you know, like me who has this relationship with God, where it's like real cool. Hey, God, we doing we doing the Breakfast Club this morning? Yeah, I know. I'll be there with you, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I believe if we would give people room to grow with God, that they'll find God on their own. Mm -hmm. And they'll find God is so loving and so kind on their own that they don't have to be pushed into, yeah, go on and do this, go do that. You won't have to be pushed to do anything. You'll want to from the bottom of your heart. You want to love people. You want to share his goodness. Mm -hmm. You want to share a mm -hmm. smile, you know, that kind of thing. That's so. interesting because when I pray to God, I pray to God to give me direction, right? Absolutely. And guide my steps. Absolutely. And, and I guess I always say I want to do what God wants me to do. But what Absolutely. you said is interesting. It's not because what if I want to do something? Yeah. And it's like, God, you going to come with me? God Absolutely. might just be like, yeah, go go do that. Yeah. Go, and let me I, and let me figure it out on my own. Whatever happens, I'm going to be with you regardless. Absolutely. That's because you can... You can, just like you cannot separate your breathing from you mm -hmm. unless you're, you know, on a ventilator or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. 
you can't separate God from you mm. because God lives inside. We always try to make him upstairs, mm -hmm. you know, and we say the man upstairs. We know that's, you know, proverbial kind of talk, but God is inside. Mm -hmm. And if God is inside, he's walking with me. Mm. If he's inside, he's talking with me. If he's inside, he really is concerned about whether I, you know, I make it or not, you know, whether I reach my goals or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the one thing that I have found in my life that has served me so well is when there's a peace that I have with any decision, then that's a stamp. All right. I agree. You know, oh, when it. there's turmoil, I, I have to go back and be silent I agree. because I got to listen to make sure, okay, now mm -hmm. you're either protecting me from something or someone. And sometimes it's myself mm -hmm. because I want to rush things. You know, I'm a fixer. I'm the oldest of six kids. I'm a fixer. And God's like, slow down, Lynn. No, mm -hmm. don't slow, slow down, slow down. I'm going to give you that but I'm going to give it to you when you're ready. Mm, right. Wow. And mm. so, yeah, you got to. You here preaching. Now, you, ah. were, you were trending uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, Woody McClain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what, what happened? So when you yes. were trending, when people were calling you, did you know what it was right away? And I did not. You did not. So what was your mind thoughts when you seen Woody McClain doing the, the, all that in the video? Well, here's the thing about uh, the video. We actually did the video together. We mm -hmm. were there on set together. And, you know, Woody is Woody. I, I mean, that's Bobby Brown. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so, you know, we know he's a great artist and just all around great guy. Um, but people were talking as though it was the power Woody. Mm hmm how is it that Yolanda is, you know, because people are mad at him. Okay. Right. And, yeah. you know, yeah, right, right. <laughs> that character. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah, they're they're mad at him. So they, they forget he's acting. Yeah, because, and, and that's the thing. How do you forget that this man is acting? He's not the same character in that video that he is on Power. So what is that? Mm -hmm. I didn't get that. And so uh, this, this generation my of God's daughter children had to, are a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter had to explain mm -hmm. to me, well, you know, he's kind of a bad character on power. I'm like, yeah, but that's just his job. You know, he as a person, he's a man of faith. Mm -hmm. And um, when they told, when the record company said, uh, we have Woody for the video, I was like, yes, because I remember the Bobby Brown Woody. Right. right. I'm, I haven't watched Power enough to know that character. Mm -hmm. I'm like season one. Mm -hmm. Power. Bobby Brown could have been on Power. Bobby was a wild boy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all leave Bobby alone. Did he freestyle that or was that choreographed no, into no, it? No, he, he kind of freestyled that. And then, um, and I guess, uh, I guess they all said, okay, we like that. Do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so the video captures a lot of dancing. I love to dance. So mm -hmm. it captures a lot of different types of dancing because I personally believe that God loves variety. Mm -hmm. Because if he right. did not love variety, all of us would look the same. Right. That's right. And so we all have our different things and we all have those, you know, those little quirks mm -hmm. that that make us amazing. Did you speak to him after? Did you speak to him yes, after the winter? Yes, absolutely. What did he to, say? What, he's what did like, you? oh, just thank you so much, Miss Adams, for allowing me to. I'm like, what? <laughs> you are making me cool. So <laughs> listen, <laughs> you are making me a cool woman right mm -hmm. now. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, why are there uh, three different versions of the church doors? What does that symbolize? There are three different churches. Tr three different churches. <laughs> three different versions because we had uh, the version for the gospel gospel uh, audience. Mm -hmm. Then the audience who's like me, who loves, you know, to hear different versions and dance mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I, I just thought, man, what a great song to kind of hype up and give the message to people that may not walk into the church doors and hear this. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was our, that was our goal mm -hmm. because technically, Church doors can be your heart. Mm -hmm. 
when you let me make it to the church doors, I'll tell them what you've done for me. So you open your heart to give your testimony about how good God has been. And so, again, there are people who will get this on the dance floor and it'll hit them. Oh, God is good. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Do you feel like uh, Jermaine Dupri recently uh, had some comments? We have the audio too, if you want to hear it. But he recently said that because the younger artists aren't walking through those church the, you doors. Got the audio right? mm-hmm. Well, Jermaine, she, oh, yeah, no, you I've can just take a listen. Oh, you heard it. Yeah, I've heard it. Do that. you feel like that is inf- affecting music? The fact that you that, like, like you said, people aren't may not ever walk through those church doors, but it can still hit them in their heart. Is that possible, or you feel like these artists need to get back in church? Well, I think what he meant is that the producers who are doing the producing have to have that background to know um, how to bring in the tenors, how to bring in your altos, you know, to make that full, effective sound. We all know the difference between uh, church musicians and regular musicians Mm -hmm. who did not get that training. Because here's the thing about church. Church trains you because you have an audience that can't go nowhere for like two, three hours and so you get that on the job training that you wouldn't get just, you know, in your basement, you know, mixing and trying to do your thing. So you you learn how to capture an audience. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what's missing as well, because these kids don't have that type of experience until they get in front mm-hmm. of audiences. And That's most real. of them don't know what to do. Uh, I watched Saturday Night Live, the young lady who um, uh, had this huge song during the pandemic about, you know, driving down the street and stuff like that. And uh, and, and, and my daughter's going to get me because I not don't remember. Not right? Huh? Not to, I'm sorry, not Tanache, right? No, no, it was it was a, uh, a, another young lady. Was it this weekend? No, 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 no. I mean, oh, okay, during okay. the pandemic. She white she had a white or black white, 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 white artist? White artist. She had on some baggy clothes and things like that. Now, she made a song on her computer in her room, and it blew up. Mm-hmm. It went viral like a billion times. Mm-hmm. They immediately put her on Saturday Night Live. She's not ready for that. And it was obvious that she had not had the training Mm -hmm. and if we go back even to the Motown days Mm -hmm. and the Stax days there was artist development they don't have that anymore and that's the thing that I believe Jermaine was talking about as well they do not have artist development and artist development for us as people who attended church and grew up in the church we grew up in the choir or either the band or something like that you had that Every Sunday, every Thursday when you had rehearsals, you had the chance to, you know, be corrected and, you know, and and make it right. Mm-hmm. And so I know, I definitely know we got to bring that artist development back. Uh, and then the other thing that you miss is that that heart and soul. That's right. You, you can only get that heart and soul when mm-hmm. you're connected, you know. And if you're not connected to your source... You will miss, you know, you may sound amazing, but there will be this emptiness that is very obvious that, you know, it's like, uh, maybe you need to, you know, get a little quiet, get get some peace or, you know, do some yoga or whatever you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, we, we talked about that this morning. I said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I agree with everything you said, but that, 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 that soul. That soul, yeah. I think it. The church is so rooted, especially the black church. It's just so rooted in community mm-hmm. and black people fellowshipping, fellow fellowshipping with each other. It's just a certain soul that comes from that that I think people are just missing nowadays because of the fact we don't fellowship as much. Like I don't believe right. social media is real fellowship. No, I don't not, believe that's no, real community. But no, because and and those you know I'm, I'm gonna get a little technical here. We're in this room. I could have done this on Zoom but it wouldn't feel the same. It wouldn't be the same, no. That's right. It's because all of us have these energy blocks Mm -hmm. that, you know, we we have. It's just just amazing how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. But trying to get that same feeling on a Zoom call or Mm -hmm. on uh, whatever yard it is and stuff like that, it's, it's, 
it's going to be hard because there's no authenticity mm-hmm. there. You know, when you respond to me and you smile, I'm like, yeah, I'm on the right track. When you respond to me and you shake your head, Mm -hmm. I'm like on the right track. When you respond to me and I see that smile, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, and then I give it back. Right. Right. And so for me, and I can only speak for me, I like the call and response that we've grown up with. Mm -hmm. I also love being able to see if the message is affecting the person Mm -hmm. or the congregation or, you know, like we're going to be at the Barclays Center. So that's a whole bunch of people. But you still hone in on those folk that you see are getting it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the whole place just gets electrified. But it starts with me and you, and you, and you, and then everybody, you know, comes in. So, yeah, I think the other thing that church does as well, because we didn't have the counselors and the therapists and Mm -hmm. all this stuff, you know, like you're doing your program, um, it was our therapy Mm -hmm. growing up because... You know, you could shout it out. You could cry it out. Mm -hmm. You can yes sir it out. You know, you could sing it out. You can usher it out, you know, but we don't have that like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And we've advanced. And I'm glad we've advanced because now we can see, okay, this is one of the problems that we need to work on in our community. What better place to start it than in a place that cares about people? So when you have a, a counselor or a therapist on staff at your church, That's right. it makes it so much better for people who want to come in and just talk and, mm-hmm. you know, get stuff out. Um, I believe in God and therapy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about if, if, if you read the Bible, there are so many times where everyone that did anything huge for God had to go into that place and like, okay, who do I talk to? Who do I counsel with? Mm. And I just want people to get back to the basics Mm -hmm. of fellowship with God. Mm. Because if you get back to the basics, you realize all of the stuff that people are majoring on has nothing to do with the real love of God. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel about Bedside Baptist and Mount Zion Zoom AME? Well, um, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. There's a place for all of that. Okay. And that is why churches have to advance mm-hmm. and make sure that they have those things available. Now, as I said before, just like I didn't come, you know, like I didn't Zoom with you guys because I wanted to be physically in the room, there's just something you're going to get inside the building That's true. that yeah. you cannot get. That's true. Just on Zoom. And and I'm going to have to confess because my job takes me out most of the time where I can't get back to <clears throat> my physical church. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as I am off the road, oh, I'm going to my church. But I again, I will say thank God for the Zoom. That's right. Thank God for mm-hmm. the streaming. Mm-hmm. But when you can... Get in there because it makes a huge difference. Yeah, I ain't caught the Holy Spirit over Zoom yet. Nah, and I, and I, kinda, I, I watch the Potter's kinda, House every Sunday. Got, yes. But it's yes. different when you're actually in the Potter's <laughs> House. I've yes. been to the Potter's <laughs> House and you feel it. Yes, you do. But, yes, you but do. when you're watching the Zoom, I like it. It's good. Yes. But when you're there, it's different. You can feel God. You can. Yeah. yeah. I, want, I wanted to know do you look at music how you look at acting, right? So mm-hmm. there's certain music you, you're not going to sing because you don't, you don't stand by it. Right. But do you look at that as acting as well? Like, is there parts that you say that doesn't fit my quote? unquote persona but it is acting so you're really taking yourself out of your person and being somebody else like would Yolanda Adams ever be like a a, a drug king queen like Mary J Blige in power would you play that part mm. would you play certain parts that don't necessarily sit your fit your persona now I wouldn't be a drug dealer or a queen pen but I would I I I like meaty roles that's why I took on Danita, Danita Jordan mm-hmm. because although we're gospel artists mm-hmm. and family women, she's 
She's cutthroat. Mm-hmm. And I'm the total opposite. Mm-hmm. You know, I let people live because <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think God can get you better than I can. Right. You know, so um, I but um, I would and this is this is going to sound really crazy. I would like to do a role like Murder, She Wrote. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'd like to be a detective mm. and see that that involves gore and but that's still a positive uh, side would you be on the other side of that would you be the murderer you know what i don't know no one has ever asked me that question what if he was killing people who were possessed by the devil there's this movie called frailty right (laughs) you ever seen the movie frailty no i have not frailty is about that where this guy was they thought he was a serial killer but literally god was giving him visions and the people he was killing wow was people that were, were like bad pedophiles people. and all oh, yes like people that killed oh, their mom wow. like terrible people oh wow yep. and, it was, and it was all rooted in his faith for god he had i'm to gonna have to, to research that yep. i'm gonna have to research that because i don't know if god just wants you to kill people just <laughs> you know but. but people don't even come to you with those type of like you don't have to turn down that stuff they don't even come to no, you no 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 i don't acting. have to yeah yeah i don't have to turn down those but i did have to turn down a record uh deal when i was uh making the transition from uh one gospel label to you know a, a, a secular label this guy was like uh yeah we have this thing we, we're gonna turn you into this you know this this mega this and I'm like, oh, okay. So how is that going to be possible? Well, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to learn how to butterfly. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Butterfly? Wait, 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 wait. I'm oh. like, oh, you mean she's, the she's dance? She's young. Butterfly is the dance. It's like, what? I know how to butterfly. I just heard you learned that. I'm the butterfly. Can you imagine me doing the butter as long as I am? He was serious? He was serious. We were in London. He was serious. To the praise and worship, he wanted you to butterfly? <laughs> no. Oh, he to was, yeah, it was going to be like, you know, crazy. it's going to be crossover. It was, yeah, kind of crossover, infusion, whatever. I'm like, nah. Was that Jamaican what gospel, gospel song? Was, was that Caribbean gospel? gospel? Too? It, we never found out. <laughs> Is there any hip-hop records you ever turned down? Like somebody wanted, to sing, wanted you to sing a hook or something? Well, you know, I've done uh, uh, the hook with... Um, Bone Slugs Harmony. They did Order My Steps. Mm-hmm. They redid that. Mm. Um... Let me see who else. You know, I've I've been sampled several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick Cannon has uh, done a sample. You should have turned that one down. Uh, <laughs> Yo, shut up, man. Ah, salute, salute to Nick. Uh, like, you should have turned that one down. That was, <laughs> that was when he was a uh, Nickelodeon and Disney kid. So, oh, you know, okay. oh, it was. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Uh, you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've done that, but. Um, it, I don't know. It's according to, you know, did I just, yeah, I've done some stuff with Trade of Truth. Mm-hmm. I've done some stuff with Common. Mm-hmm. Um, and who else? That's one more. Oh, uh, I think The Truth from Philly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I've done some, yeah, some out of the box stuff. Okay. I'm kind of proud of. I like what you said earlier. You said you feel like God can handle people better than you can. Absolutely. So, can you share a time where like your faith might have been tested? Oh, and you, you I mean, really it's tested to get all the time. Okay, well, okay. yeah, because again, I'm the oldest of six kids, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm that protector. Mm-hmm. And for someone to think that they had uh, an advantage or could take advantage of my kindness, and um, and try to like you know, and try to play me, as mm-hmm. y'all would say, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, bruh. Me and God got this. So right. you don't think God's going to tell me first before you try to do something? And people are really surprised when you don't come at them the way they would come at you. Mm. When you don't match energy. When you don't match mm-hmm. energy. Because yeah. it's like, nah, I've learned a long time ago. If you want to just sit back and watch God do it, sit back and watch God do mm-hmm. it. Because right. as soon as you put your hand in it and try to fix something, gonna mess up and then you're gonna mess up your purpose That's right. wow. you're gonna mess up your journey and i would rather god say you know what <laughs> i'm so proud of you you yeah you held on mm-hmm. now i may go home and just yell and scream be mad as a mother, but yeah. <laughs> i'd be mad but mm-hmm. it's like nah uh-uh. how are you so tapped in because like you i reference sexy red you know who sexy red is you know yeah. power like you know how are you so tapped in everything that's going on. You knew Jermaine Dupree's statement. 
Oh about yeah. R&B well, you know, I've known Jermaine Dupri since he was a little kid. You mm-hmm. tell him act like you live in the shelter and you never come I'm outside. I'm not saying like you because a lot of people. How you know who Sexy Red is? How you know what Jermaine Dupri is? I feel like a lot of gospel, but you're not traditionally like you're not the traditional gospel artist. A lot of gospel artists and people in the world of God. They tap out of stuff. They remove it and or they act like they don't see it even though it's in front of them. Well, I mean, I get a chance, thankfully, to be in a lot of places like the BET Awards, the Grammy mm-hmm. Awards, places like that. And I mean, and you have to live in a box not to know mm-hmm. current music. I'm a music lover. Mm-hmm. So I listen to all types of music and you because got kids. again, you listen to yeah, sexy I have a daughter, red? right? You listen yes. to sexy red? No, not at oh, all. Okay. I know I'm saying I listen to a lot, but I know who she is because she's been on uh, the BET Awards, Awards yeah. and things like that. And um, and and for me, I listen to beats, I listen to words, and I love sincerity in music. Mm-hmm. You know, and so. I'll, I yeah, and my daughter keeps me pretty you cool. You know, she's old. Your daughter? She's twenty three, okay. so she keeps me real cool. I just got two more questions for you. Do you, okay. do you feel because of your faith and because you do gospel music that you get put in a box? Oh, they tried mm-hmm. years ago. I mean, they really tried years ago. Okay, so we're gonna put you in this little comfortable space and blah blah blah. And I'm like, uh, I think we're bigger than that. Mm. Mm. Because God is bigger than that, you know. I, and I mean, we there's so many things that we could talk about God being bigger than. I mean, He is ultimate. So if God is everywhere at the same time, blessing everyone and you know holding the world together, why would I allow someone who has a small view of God? to crush my big view of God, mm. knowing that I've lived long enough to see the bigness and the hugeness of God. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm telling you, it it started when I was a teenager because I started singing in a choir. We were going all over the country and stuff. And then I had my first um, billboard song at 17. And I... I realized at that time, wow, I like this. I like doing this. And then I would see Tremaine Hawkins and Shirley Caesar and people like that doing it for a living. I'm like, okay, God, well, however you got to do that, let's let's do that. Mm-hmm. And um and I saw the kind of box they tried to put Tremaine in when she started singing solo, um, aside from the Hawkins family. She had this amazing song. You guys are probably too young to remember. She had this amazing song called Fall Down on Me. And it was talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But she had a couple of dancers and uh, Kevin Bond, who is amazing, was on one of the little uh, piano guitar things Mm -hmm. running around, you know. And it, it was a joyful song, nothing disrespectful. And they gave her grief. Mm. about that Mm -hmm. and I'm like wow so I've seen that happen to other people and I refuse to let it happen to me and I love God's timing in my life it's always been about his timing and me wanting his time because years later I'm sitting here with the breakfast club discussing my 14th project you mm-hmm. know <laughs> we sitting here with Yolanda and, Adams discussing no, her 14th but project think right? about it though if I had gotten mad at the producer who says oh you'll never sell more than this guy mm-hmm. or you'll never sell more than that guy because there was a whole bunch of chauvinism in gospel music way back then mm-hmm. and instead of getting like upset and you know fighting back I just like I've taken my hands off of it. Mm. And I've outsold those men. Mm. Some of them are gone home to be with the Lord. And I'm still here. Look at God. That's right. So I know what that feels like. But I also know what it feels like to tell young people like a Leandria, like a Tasha, and like uh, 
Kiki Sheard and all of the young people who uh, I've mentored over the years is that you don't have to be anybody but you. And you stand your ground. If you want to sing a song that somebody may not agree with, you sing that song because somebody out there is going to be touched by that song. Mm -hmm. I mean, Open My Heart is one of those songs that you guys have played for years. Mm -hmm. And we, we just celebrated, what, 25, 26 years of Open My Heart? And I can't go anywhere in the world and not sing that song. Wow. wow. So, yeah. My, my last question is, what do you see as your legacy in the world of gospel music, but just in the world, period? Like when, when Yolanda Adams no longer ceases to exist, what do yeah. you want people to say about Miss Adams? Well, I hope that people say that I inspired, encouraged, uplifted, and educated them mm -hmm. in many aspects, not just gospel music, not just uh, business, but in life, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because that's huge. Um, and that I represented God in such a way that I made him so cool and so livable that it there were no restrictions <clears throat> with God because I don't see God as restricted, you know, and I try to pass that on to everybody that I meet, you know. As you said before, because we are his eyes and ears and his body on earth, there are just certain things that we have to make priority. Mm -hmm. We've got to make love a priority. That's right. Have to. Now, do I agree with everything that someone is doing? No, I don't agree with everything my family members do. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't keep me from loving them. It keeps me wanting the best for them. And then... You know, you don't have to respond to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you just got to let go and let God. Mm -hmm. And I hope that when people say, hey, you you know, Yolanda Adams, you know, she, she, she's gone. Like, wow, that woman helped me through so and so and so and so. Mm -hmm. That woman helped my father get through cancer or mm -hmm. so and so. That. Those are the things that I want said about myself you know amen well we love value and appreciate you miss adams oh i know you're gonna play that's why i love y'all what, what song do you want to play oh my gosh uh hmm play on god on god number yeah, one on one number, number one, one on sundays number one and yes. before we leave we just add like you know can you give us a prayer before we leave absolutely if you don't mind? let's do it i would love that lord we are just so grateful and thankful that you have allowed us this time to spend together. It's been so amazing to be with these wonderful young people who are doing your work on a daily basis. They make us laugh. They make us think. They make us mm, want to be better people. And so, God, I ask right now that you give them the desires of their heart, whatever those secret desires are that they haven't told anybody, give them to them and just bless their socks off, God. And give them more years, as many years as they want. But more than anything, make them grateful for this platform that you've given them because it changes the world. Amen. 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 Yolanda Amen. Adams, Amen. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us so much. Ah, uh, no problem. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.